This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this line distortion effect using GIMP. And if you'd like to learn more about how GIMP works, be sure to check out the GIMP series, which is a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the major tools and features in GIMP, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. I'll put a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here in GIMP. The first thing we want to do is just open up the photograph of the subject we'd like to apply this effect to. And this is just a stock photo that I grabbed from Pixabay. I'll put a link in the description if you want to follow along with what I'm doing. Otherwise, you can use any photo you'd like. So the first thing we want to do here is just right click on the subject's layer and make sure it has an alpha channel by clicking add alpha channel. If this is grayed out and you can't click it, that means you already have an alpha channel, you're good to go. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to click the button down here that says create a new layer and add it to the image. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to fill this layer in with black, which as you can see here, I have the foreground set as black, the background set as white. This is the default when you open up GIMP. If you've changed this to something else, just go ahead and reset it back by clicking this little icon right here. I'm going to go to edit, uh, edit, fill with foreground color, and now that's going to be black. And I'm going to take this layer and click and drag it beneath the subject layer. And then I'll click back on the subject layer to activate that. And the next thing we want to do now is remove the background from this image here. So to do that, I'm going to use the, uh, the paths tool. And I'm going to zoom in on this bottom left area by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel. And uh, to move around the page, I'm just going to press down the mouse wheel and move the mouse like that. And I'm just going to click and create points going around the edge of the subject here. Uh, don't worry about it being super smooth and, and really accurate. It could be it could be a little um, a little uh, you know rough like I'm doing here because uh, it doesn't really matter. We're going to end up blurring this image anyway. So don't worry about having super crisp, smooth, exact, precise lines. Okay, so once I'm done, I'm going to bring the line back to the starting point over here. I'm going to hold Control and then click on the starting point to close the path. And now I want to create a, uh, a selection from the path. So I'm going to press enter on the keyboard. And now I want to invert that selection. So I'll go to select, invert, and I will delete the, uh, the selection by pressing delete on the keyboard. If you're using Mac, you'll probably have to go to select, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, edit, clear. But everyone else, you just press delete on the keyboard. Now we can go to select, none. And I'm just going to get rid of those those, those points from the screen by clicking on the move tool or any other tool. And what we want to do now is uh, desaturate this image. I'm going to go to colors, saturation, and I'm just going to completely remove the saturation from the image. I'll go ahead and click OK. And now I want to add to the shadows of this image. So I'm going to go to colors, uh, colors, curves, and I'm going to take this bottom left point down here and move this to the right. And if you notice, it's darkening the dark areas of the image. It's, it's adding black to the uh, to the shadows there because we want this image to blend in with the background a little better. If I toggle off the preview, you can see it kind of does. It, look, it looks like it doesn't really belong in the background there. But if I apply that, you can see it's kind of starting to blend in there. So, and I'm going to take the white stop up here and bring this to the left a little bit. We just want to add some contrast. This effect really works well when you have an image with a lot of contrast, like you see here. You just adjust that a little bit. You can go ahead and eyeball it, something like that. The, uh, the settings you're going to use here depends on the image, but with this image, these settings right here look about good. I'm going to go ahead and click OK to finalize that. And what I want to do now is give this image a slight Gaussian blur. So I'll go to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I'm going to give this a three-point Gaussian Blur. So I'm going to hit three and press OK. And what I'm going to do now is create another uh, layer on top of this. So I'm going to create a new layer, click OK. And I'm going to make this layer black as well. I'll go to Edit, Fill with Foreground Color. And now I'm going to add some lines to the uh, to this layer. I'm going to go to Filters, Render, Pattern, Grid. And in this menu, I'm going to click on where it says Color right here. You can see the default color is black. I'm going to click on that and change that to white. I'm going to make this grid white. Go ahead and click OK. And as you can see, a white grid appears on the page. What I want to do now is get rid of the, um, the vertical line. So I'm going, to I'm going to click this Unlock button right here between line width and line height. And I'm going to take the line width, bring that all the way down. So that should get rid of the uh, the vertical lines. I'm going to take the, the uh, horizontal lines and make them a little thicker by bringing them up like that. That looks pretty good. And then I'll take the height and I'll bring that down to maybe 25. I'm going to make these lines maybe, maybe 8. That looks pretty good right there. I'll go ahead and click OK to finalize that. And now I'm going to make these lines take the shape 
of the subject image beneath it. And to do that, I'm going to go to Filters, Map, Displace. And I want to choose an input, uh, an input for both of these here. I'm going to click on this first question mark box. And I'm going to look for the subject layer. I want to double click that to activate it. And do the same thing for the second input. Double click the subject layer. And where it says horizontal and vertical displacement, just go ahead and move that up just a tiny bit. And you're going to notice the lines start to take the shape of the, uh, the subject here. So I think I'm going to go with that right there. Maybe I'll try it. Maybe see how 10 looks. Okay, that right there looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and use that. I'll click OK. And then I'm going to go to Edit, Copy Visible. And then I want to turn off the visibility of that layer. I'm now going to click on the subject layer to activate it. I'm going to right click it and go to Add Layer Mask. And I want to choose Black Full Transparency. Go ahead and click on that. Click Add. And then go to Edit, Paste. And then I want to, it's going to create it as a floating, as a floating selection. So I'm just going to click this green anchor icon right here to anchor that down. And then I want to right click on this layer and go to apply layer mask. And that's going to finalize that. And what I want to do now is I, I want to make these lines blend in with the, uh, the background a little more. So I'm going to go back to colors and curves and I'm going to adjust this a little bit. I'm going to add more, I'm going to add more to the black area. Maybe add some more to the white area like that, just to make it look like it's a little more natural and blending in. I'll go ahead and click OK. And what you can see here, the effect that we've created, we've taken that image and made it comprised of these individual lines. And if you look closely, you can see the lines take the shape of the curvature of the subject there. And as you zoom out, you can see the image becomes a lot more visible. You can see clearly what it more is, but when you zoom in, you can see it's just comprised of individual lines. And if you'd like to add a bit of color to it, like I did in my thumbnail, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to create a new layer on top of this. Click OK. And I'm going to change the foreground color to a color that I'd like to fill this in with. I'll try something like pink right there. You can use whatever color you'd like. It really doesn't matter. I'll go to Edit, Fill with Foreground Color. And then I'll set the Blend Mode to Soft Light. And as you can see, it takes some of that color and applies it to the... Uh, uh, to the, the areas dictated by the soft light blend mode. So uh, I think that should do it for this tutorial. That is how you can go about creating this uh, line distortion effect using GIMP. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.